Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. A very provocative uh, topic tonight, Russia. Their, Russia's ambition strikes fear into NATO generals. It seems very much so, and we're going to have to kind of back up and look at some things that have happened over the course of the last few months to really understand what I'm speaking about. But this article that came out today on RT News NATO wants surrender if Russia nukes Warsaw. Ex-U.S. Supreme Commander made this statement here. Uh, that was Mr. Wesley, I believe, there in the photo. Uh, that's something that just seemed very provocative in the statement itself. Uh, RT News reports on this today. It says, Putin dominated Russia is mistaken if it expects the U.S. to surrender in a hypothetical conflict after Moscow nukes, say, Warsaw. Former NATO Supreme Allied Commander of Europe told CNN promising retaliatory measures. Uh, they are using nuclear weapons in their military exercises as means of de-escalating a conflict. As though they could fire a nuclear weapon at, say, Warsaw, and then NATO would say, oh my goodness, we did not know you really meant it, the former NATO commander said. His opinion comes in unison with fears of Polish foreign minister, uh, who, uh, uh, Wytold uh, Wasaki, who said last month that Russia's activity is a sort of existential threat because this activity can destroy countries. You know, now the thing is that, and let me, I have to say this in, with very much respect to my own country, the United States of America, that I do dearly love. Uh, but many of my own people from my own country have no idea how these escalation of the tensions that have happened in Eastern Europe developed to begin with. It's been pretty much believed that Russia was just a big bad bear coming in here, overthrowing Ukraine, causing all the chaos, and then making everybody else scared to death that Russia was going to come in there and overthrow all the former Soviet uh, states again and retake this area back for himself, that this is Putin's really ambition. But as I've actually watched this cover the news from both sides of the coin, I have watched the propaganda machine go to work in media, actually on both sides. Russia's no different. They're using their own propaganda machine as well. But we had clearly seen the evidence ourselves how that NATO, under the, under the direction of the United States, very much have been prov provoking the situation in Europe to begin with. In fact, the very collapse of uh, Ukraine had a lot to do with the United States CIA operatives inciting that violence there between the neo-Nazis there in the Ukraine that hated the Russian people that lived there in the first place and also wanted to get rid of the government that was more pro-Russian. They wanted to become part of the uh, European Union. Well, it's kind of a little bit late now. It looks like the European Union is all falling apart anyway at this particular point. And I think that's been part of the plan all along. If you remember, we shared with you in several broadcasts how they had actually been putting up new checkpoints, new border crossings long before this whole migrant crisis ever began in the first place. We did several news broadcasts over a year ago asking that very question, why are we having all these checkpoints built? What are they there for? Especially on the former Soviet states uh, on the border of like the Czech Republic and parts of um, Austria, places where there should not have been a checkpoint, places, new ones in fact, that have, should, have, should not even be constructing a new one. And now they have all these other kind of border crossings that are being developed in the countries. And of course, all of a sudden now we have a migrant crisis and now they're talking about locking down borders everywhere. In fact, today uh, in Austria, on the border of Austria and Italy, they're, they are getting ready to lock down their border as well because the Pope of Rome is letting thousands of migrants come into Italy. Is he really wanting to have the Vatican blow up, blown up by ISIS after all? Is he just trying to expedite getting moved down to Israel? Not really sure about all that, but there's a good possibility this is part of his plan. They're definitely wanting to see Europe just fall into chaos. And I don't quite understand exactly why other than to bring about the New World Order. But nonetheless, getting back on track here, 
this particular statement here is very much a provocative statement against Russia there, as if Russia is going to run out and nuke uh, Poland in the first place. Remember, as I said, we covered a lot of this. The United States, in fact, when Obama was telling the U.S. people that they were uh, that they were going to have to send heavy equipment, tanks and planes and everything else to the Eastern Europe along Latvia and places like that in response to Russia uh, building 40 new ICBMs, uh, intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles nu with nuclear warhead capabilities. He was doing that, according to Obama, in response to uh, what Putin was doing on these 40 new ICBMs. But the truth was never told to the American public. In fact, Russia was responding to an already huge escalation of military hardware that the United States and Obama had sent to Latvia and all these places to start with. You can actually find these things probably yourself, unless the United States has blocked some of the places that you can search. I do run into that also in Eastern Europe as well. Believe me, they don't want you to see everything here either, and it's not the U.S. so much here. It's just things they like to block from your view as well. But we try de very desperately to find the things that we can to let you know what's really going on. And now I don't say that Russia doesn't have their own ambitions. That's going to be quite clear in what you're about to see here in just a little bit. And it does appear to me that Russia very much, their ambitions is to put themselves back on the stage as not just the second strongest world power in the world, as Obama said about Russia not long ago, but they want to be number one. Let's take a look at some more interesting things that are going on here. Rising terror threat casts doubt on U.S.-led coalition effectiveness in Iraq, Russian U.N. envoy on RT News today stated. Now that is really a provocative statement in itself there when you think about it. Why is, a, why is Russia's U.N. envoy bringing into question the, the U.S.-led coalition in Iraq? They're bringing up that particular issue there, saying, in other words, basically stating that the United States has no ability to get rid of ISIS. They couldn't do it in Syria. They can't do it in Iraq. And now they're setting the stage for Russia to move into Iraq. And by the way, that has been going on. Plans and preparations for that has been going on for quite some time. In fact, Russia almost got into it when Turkey came across into Iraqi territory fighting against Aleppo, uh, or excuse me, not Aleppo, but uh, with Nineveh there. That was almost a full-blown escalation that could have easily spiraled out of control. But see, Putin wasn't ready for that type of war yet. He wants to build up that military machine so that if he does make the threat, then Turkey will obey and back down. Of course, Erdogan at the same time is trying to overrun his country and become the dictator that he has always dreamed for, to bring back the Turkish Empire. Maybe, maybe Erdogan's real true idea is to take over Europe. Maybe this is the reason why they have all the Muslims running through Europe. By the way, the Vatican does need a distraction. They do need a Mahdi. And sorry, Adnan Akhtar, I don't guess you'll be the Mahdi after all. Maybe Erdogan is the Vatican's choice there. And he sent all the Muslims from this war-torn countries and everything into Europe, along with a whole bunch of the ISIS members that the Turkish government, Erdogan, has been very good at supporting. Sending them all through Europe in order to topple the entire economic structure here. Hopefully that they could revive the Turkish Empire, that, that, that uh, empire that they once had many years ago. And then that way the Pope could move into Israel and rule everything, rule the rest of the world from there. Maybe that is the real plan behind there. Anyway, let's get back to the RT News story here about where rising terror threat casts doubt on U.S.-led coalition's effectiveness, effectiveness in Iraq, says the Russian U.N. envoy has questioned the effectiveness of the U.S.-led counter-terror operation in Iraq as terrorist activity has intensified there. He also urged the U.N. to delve into the origin of chemical agents attained by the militants via Turkey. Speaking at Friday's U.N. Security Council meeting on Iraq, Russian's ambassador to the U.N., uh, Vitaly Cherkin, uh, commended the Iraqi government's effort in combating Islamic State uh, while questioning the role of the International Coalition under the leadership of the U.S. forces, which he said has not achieved any feasible progress in, on, on the ground so far. 
Sounds like to me they are definitely setting a stage for takeover. And I think the Iraqis are planning to do the exact same thing. So in order for the U.S. to keep from losing yet another oil-rich territory that they've already gained, they're going to have to do something to kind of round uh, the Iraqis back into their corner and making them obey. Uh, let's see what it says here also. Rising terror threat cast out continuing in the same article here. It says the dramatic rise of terror activity, especially in Baghdad, makes us grow wary and question the efficiency of the activities of the U.S. coalition, which has been calling itself global in the recent time due to some reason, he said, pointing out that the rapid, rapid expansion of the Islamic State operations in Libya, Afghanistan, and Europe there should be no room for double standards. All responsible members of the international community must follow a consistent and principled line in countering this absolute evil, he said. Well, let me just say this to the Russian foreign minister, and I think he already knows this anyway, but let me just state this for his sake here, Mr. Chirk in there, so that he is quite aware of my stance on this as well, if he ever takes the time to listen to Israeli News Live. Don't think he will, but if he ever were to. I think the United States has done a superb job, especially right along with Turkey. You forget they're the ones that created ISIS in the first place. And ISIS is doing exactly what they intended it to do, and that was to totally destabilize the region, collapse all the countries around there, including Syria and Iraq, which they're doing a very good job. In fact, Jordan's not being effective because they never sent them into Jordan. But also they've sent all the refugees into Europe. That was another plan as well, no doubt. And Europe also will probably cave in to this same problem. Or maybe it was just to break up the European Union to start with and to cause an economic chaos around the world. So in that regards, I think that they have done a superb job with ISIS. Being a little facetious here, uh, nonetheless, we do not need ISIS, and Turkey has definitely been the be best puppeteer that they could be for their puppet masters. So... Continuing on, there should be, as he says here, poisonous warfare substances are rapidly spreading across the region and are used by terrorists, but some member states are consistent in turning a blind eye on that. That's the United States. Let me just tell you like he's trying to tell you. The U.S. will turn a blind eye while Turkey made up all the gas and stuff, got the components from the European Union, no doubt. There are certain states like France and others there that do help supply this equipment there. Turkey got it into the right hands. They blame it on Assad to make it look like he was a bad guy so the United States could threaten to bring in the heavy equipment. But they never expected Russia to come stepping in on the stage. That threw a big monkey wrench in the whole thing. And of course, don't worry, Russia, NATO, who I do believe, and it's just an opinion, I can't say it's perfectly right, but I believe that NATO truly is in Daniel's prophecy, that king of the north, ran by the Pope of Rome. He is that prince of Meshach and Tubal, as we read about in Ezekiel 38 there. Give him time. The king of the north will come back because Russia's expansion into the Middle East, not only in Syria, but will now soon expand into Iraq. That will certainly bring the United States, NATO's king of the north, out like a whirlwind. Because, see, Russia's not going to be stupid. Russia's going to come in with China. Remember, the prophecy of Daniel in chapter 11 there said that the king of the north was troubled by the tidings out of the east and out of the north. So there's two northern powers, isn't there? According to Daniel, 11, there are two northern powers. If the king of the north is troubled by something in the north and out of the east, and we know that's Russia and China, then we have two northern kingdoms in this regards here. And that's definitely going to bring NATO in like a whirlwind like no one has ever seen. All right, so let's continue on there. Speaking about that gas, why golly gee, what do you know? Mr. Erdogan here, somebody made a nice picture with him there. Uh, he's got Mr. Erdogan here, and Erdem was an MP. He is now in prison in Turkey because he dared to speak out against uh, Erdogan. Uh, and I, I just only pray for Mr. Erdem. I pray that somewhere along the way that God will deliver this man because he was brave enough to step up, go on RT News, and expose that his own government was the really guilty party in supplying the gas 
blaming it on Bashar al-Assad as gassing his own people. Now, don't say Bashar al-Assad is some saint, and, saint walking around doing everything just right, but that's not the point there. But to falsely accuse a man is totally wrong, and we all know that. Anyway, Turkish MP has been charged with treason today after alleging in an exclusive interview with RT that ISIS terrorists had smuggled the deadly sarin nerve gas into Syria from Turkey. That was Mr. Erdem right there. This is an old article from December, 26, uh, December 16th, 2015. And uh, the article is stated here on Century Wire was Mafia State. Turkish MP now faces treason charges for the revealing how ISIS used Turkey for smuggling chemical weapons. He was imprisoned for his outspoken <clears throat> st uh, stance there. God bless him for his stance there. Anyway, uh, moving on as well, uh, Reuters on October the 7th of 2015, Iraq leans toward Russia in war on Islamic State. This is what I said. I wanted to bring you back in time a little bit and show you how that Iraq has been working closely, getting, building that relationship with Russia. So it definitely looks like some of these uh, Arabic states there, both Sunni and Shiites there, are starting to work with Russia there, trying to build something away from the United States. You have to remember, the U.S. did go in there and obliterate the country, uh, no, no less, uh, without really any true justification. Uh, I can understand the United States liberating Kuwait after Kuwait was invaded by Saddam Hussein, but to go in there and take Iraq as well was really just not the thing to do. Uh, uh, Iraq may request, the article states here, Russian airstrikes against Islamic State on its own on its soil soon and wants Moscow to have a bigger role than the United States in the war against the militant group. The head of Parliament Defense and Security Committee said it on Wednesday. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? In the upcoming few days and weeks, I think Iraq will be forced to ask Russia to launch airstrikes, and that depends on their success in Syria. Well, they've been very successful in Syria. In fact, the United States could be extremely successful against ISIS if they so wanted to. But you forget if they are successful using ISIS to topple all the region, region powers in there. It's what they did it for in the first place. They brought them in there to topple these powers. So, they're actually doing what they wanted them to do. But remember, if the United States could go in there to Iraq and completely obliterate a country in practically no time and take full control, they would have no problem with ISIS either if they wanted to get rid of them. But they're not interested in getting rid of them. All right. Closing off in this article here, I wanted to share this was on February 11th, 2016, just to show you how much Russia has become a major threat to NATO with their ambitions. Russia boosts ties with Iraq in a challenge to U.S. influence. Russia is ready to sell civil airliners to Iraq and keep providing it with military aid to fight Islamic State. Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin said on Thursday, accompanied on a trip to Baghdad by the biggest Russian delegation in years. Iraqi Foreign Ministry Ibrahim al Yafari said discussions have revolved around providing military assistance to defeat Islamic State militants, also known as Daesh, who seized a third of Iraq in 2014 and want to redraw the map of the Middle East. We need international support from, the multi, uh, from multiple sources, be it from within the international coalition or outside of it, he said, referring to the U.S.-led coalition, which has launched thousands of airstrikes and provided training and advice to Iraq's military. We need support, training, and intelligence sharing, he told reporters. Intelligence plays an important role in the war on Daesh, and we've been coordinating for a while now with the Russian side to place this information in the hands of the Iraqis. By the way, the Russian delegation that went there back in February was 100 people that went there. So you don't think Russians' ambitions hasn't struck fear in NATO's generals? Yes, because it's undermining NATO's sovereignty in this region. And believe me, the King of the North is not going to allow that much longer. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And by the way, we do need your help and support in the work that we are doing here. Ready to get back on the road, get back out there and get things right up front and covering things ourselves. Please support this work and also the biblical side of the prophecies that God has given us uh, so kindly to share with us. 
We need your help in making these things possible. You can go to our website, israelinewslive.org. There's a donation button there. Or at the end of this video is our uh, post office box. And I will have that up on the website uh, corrected as well uh, this weekend. But it's also right now, it's on our end of this video here. You can also send a check to, to Prague here. And we thank you for your love and support for this work and ministry. Shalom.